I'm Larry Walther. This is principlesofaccounting.com, Chapter 16. And in this module, we will look at the statement of cash flows prepared under a direct approach. Now, let's begin by looking at the statement of cash flows under a direct approach. And the first section is cash flows from operating activities. Here you'll find the cash received from customers for sales of goods and services, amounts paid for merchandise, inventory, wages, interest, and so on, to come up with $800,000 cash provided by operating activities. The next section, the investing activities section, I'm showing proceeds received from sale of land, $750,000, purchase price of equipment, $150,000. Basically, money's received from selling investment type assets or money's dispersed to buy investment type assets. The third major section is cash flows from financing activities. The financing activities have to do with borrowing money, issuing stock, repaying amounts loaned, paying dividends, and so on. Finally, we're just showing the change in cash. Cash increase, the net of the three sections, $530,000. In this case, the company started with 170 and ended with 700,000 of cash. There's also a separate amount that needs to be disclosed, either attached to the bottom of the statement of, as I've done or in related notes, showing non-cash investing and financing transactions such as issuing stock in exchange for a building where no cash changed hands directly. Now, how do we get these amounts? Well, in the book, there's a very comprehensive presentation of this illustration, but let's just pick one. For example, cash received from customers is shown to be $3 million. In the book, the income statement is shown, and in that income statement, there was $3,250,000 in sales, total sales $3,250,000, but by reference to the balance sheets, the beginning and ending balances, ending accounts receivable was eight fifty. dollars beginning accounts receivable was six hundred. dollars We experienced a $250,000 increase in accounts receivable during the period. A net $250,000 went uncollected. So of the $3,250,000 in sales, only $3 million was collected. Total sales minus the increase in net receivables. Next, we're going to look at how much cash is paid for merchandise inventory. This calculation is a bit more complex. We show $1,050,000 as the cash paid to buy inventory. Let's start by thinking about the cost of goods sold. The cost of goods sold on the income statement was $1,160,000. That's different than the $1,050,000. We need to first begin by considering that we also had a decrease in inventory. A beginning inventory was two twenty, dollars and ending inventory was one eighty. dollars So inventory decreased $40,000. If you will, one of the $1,160,000 cost of goods sold, $40,000 of that came out of existing stock, was not related to inventory purchase during the period on a net basis. So now we're at $1,120,000. Of the $1,160,000 cost of goods sold, $40,000 was not bought, so $1,120,000 is a preliminary calculation. But we also need to consider that we might be buying inventory on credit. Here I'm assuming the beginning accounts payable was $200,000 and the ending accounts payable was $270,000. We had a net increase in accounts payable during the period of $70,000. And so that would also be in essence a source of cash, payables that we generated, inventory that we purchased on account but haven't paid for yet. So we had $1,120,000 of purchased inventory that was used, but we paid $70,000 less than that. We'll pay the rest in a future period. So we only paid for the merchandise that was sold during the period $1,050,000. A fairly complicated transaction, one you'll probably want to refer to the textbook for and think about a while. Of course, there's reciprocal effects here if, if payables had decreased, for example, or if inventory had increased, for example, we could have some opposite effects to consider. We have another line in our cash flow statement for wages. We're showing wages paid $480,000. The income statement only showed $450,000 as wage expense. We had a decrease in wages payable in this case. If you look at the balance sheet, beginning wages payable was fifty, dollars ending was twenty. dollars So we used $30,000 of cash additionally to pay off pre-existing payables. The net cash used for wages was $480,000. We had some other items in our income statement, interest expense, other operating expenses, income taxes. Those, there were no related payables receivables. The expense incurred was also the amount paid. Had there been related balance sheet accounts for payables, then the expense amount would need to be adjusted similar to what we've done for some of the other items. 
Two items within the income statement were not shown in the direct cash flow from operations calculations. One was depreciation, it's a non-cash expense. Another is the gain on the sale of the land. That's shown separately as I'll discuss in a moment. So let's look at the sale of the land. In the investing activities section, I'm showing that land was sold for $750. The journal entry, if we were to find it for the land sale, would be debit cash $750, credit land $600, credit the gain 150. That $150,000 gain was in the income statement, but it's not in the operating activities section. Ask yourself how much cash was generated from this transaction, and the answer is 750. The gain or loss is irrelevant in this case. Cash generated was 750. That's what's shown in the investing activities section. A purchase of equipment, 150,000. By reference to the balance sheet, we see that change in equipment. Uh, equipment went up, we assumed we used cash for that purpose. We issued stock for $80,000. We can see that by looking at the balance sheet where common stock and additional paid in capital went up 10 and 70,000 respectively. Dividends in the statement of retained earnings, we show a dividend of 50,000. That's shown as a financing activities cash outflow. A repayment of long-term loans in the financing activities section. The balance sheet showed a $900,000 decrease in our term loan payable, and we're showing that here in a, as a cash outflow in our financing activities section. Finally, we have the change in cash. We had increases in cash of 530 compared to the beginning and ending balances. The non-cash investing activities section, anytime you have non-cash investing and financing activities, you'll show them as an add-on, either in supplemental notes or attached to the bottom of the statement of cash flows. Finally, we need to do a reconciliation. If we're using a direct approach, there's a supplemental schedule reconciling net income to the cash flows from operating activities. As shown on this particular slide, net income plus depreciation expense minus the gain and so forth to come up with the same 800,000 cash from operations. So a direct approach has to be supplemented with this reconciliation. Now, the presentation or preparation of this reconciliation and the details inherent therein is the subject of the next module.